So, hi and welcome to my channel. You'll see today that I was at the NAFA auction that just took place uh, last week and that I'm uh, gonna walk through the building and what you're gonna see on the racks and the different uh, furs that are there are only the sample lots that the buyers look at. And as I walk uh, through the building here, you'll see me go into the blue room, which is right beside the auction room. So people that wanna observe the auction without being right inside can sit in the blue room and watch the auction as it's progressing. On purpose, I did most of my, my videoing when there wasn't a lot of people around. But the blue room here is sometimes full, like with a couple hundred people. And you can see the big monitor that the, the, the uh, buyers and the, uh, and the guests can look at to mark their catalogs if they're not in the actual auction room. So as I walk through the warehouse, you can see racks and racks of furs. This first rack are all bobcats, and each rack represents a sample of what the buyers look at in their catalog. And later on in the video, you'll see where buyers are putting skins on the table under the right grading lights and inspecting the goods that the graders have put up. And this way, the buyers know ahead of time what they're bidding on, and they'll mark their catalogs accordingly. And hopefully when they go in the auction room, they bid what we think the value is. And it, we'll see, you see how it goes. Like sometimes it goes up, sometimes they buy it back. Sometimes they offer a counter bid that's a little bit lower. So it's, it's all designed in the best possible way to move the skins as fast as possible. If you notice, I'm looking at a sample of uh, Martin skins. And if you notice closely in the picture that the, cl the claws have been left on these Martin. We don't want any claws left on Martin. They can cause tearing in the drumming and could cause damage. So please take the claws off your Martin. Some species, like wolverine, are sold individually for the taxidermy trade. So on the rack, instead of having a sample, you'll only have one skin, and that's the sample that the people are actually buying. Taxidermy skins like wolverines and wolves and bears are sold individually to that type of market, whereas skins like marten are sold in sample lots of 10, and they might represent 200 skins. If you look at the catalog, the, the Black Bear sold very well this sale. And one of the reasons it was selling so well is because not only is there a demand for taxidermy skins, there's also a demand for the first to make the hats for the, for like the Queen's Honor Guard. There are eight different regiments in the world that use Black Bears for that, that different purpose. Next on the rack, you can see some samples of Ranch Fox. And you can see how huge they are compared to a Wild Red. They're like three times as big. You will notice a couple of different colors. So the majority of them here are gonna be wild silvers, but there's also a number of mutation colors that are also on the racks. Next, you can see us looking at samples of ranch mink. You can see by the size how big they are and it, it's almost endless when I look down the rows of how many different uh, samples are out there and all the different colors that the, the uh, ranch mink come in. Next in our tour, you can see samples of beaver skins. There are seven different sizes and there's eight skins in each sample. And the buyer looks at the samples to mark his catalog so that when we go in the auction room, we, he has an idea of the valuations that he's gonna put on each skin. One thing I wanna share with you today is that NAFA is 25% owned by trappers. 
This gives us a distinct marketing advantage in the world because we're the only auction house that offers everything in one time for the buyers to come to buy. Next, you see all the wolves on display. Again, wolves are taxidermy species, so they're sold basically one at a time. And you can see the range of colors. On the recent sale, the blacks bought incredible money, sometimes three times over the valuation marks. Next in the tour, you're gonna to see a table full of skins that are done by a dressing plant. Dressing fur in different colors and different uh, styles is an opportunity for the dressing plants to market it to the buyers. The skins that they buy at auction, they can send them directly to the tanneries to get done. So it just gives you an idea of the size of the cold storage. And then we have another building like this. But uh, trappers ask all the time about storing raw skins. Raw skins are subject to bugs and deterioration and fur, the leather going stale. They have to be in a cooler in order to protect them. They can last for years in a cooler. But you can't leave them out and expect the bugs and the and the and the uh, leather not to go stale. temperature at the right condition you can keep them for years but <clears throat> what happens with kind of fur out stuff the uh eventually the leather kind of starts to deteriorate but i mean it's it's a it has a lifespan of years but <clears throat> every year that it's here a certain amount of the skins won't dress properly they won't have the right stretch or whatever you know when you get actually get them to uh, dress so you might like seal them and keep them in here then or if yeah well it's it's the proper temperature and the right humidity in the air that's okay. the, the biggest key right Kind of need all the different colors of the mink, you know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Think of all the uh, stories behind behind hard work behind oh. each critter here. Yeah. Not only in the field, but when I gets to the fur shed and then here. Yeah. It was funny, I was hunting in Wisconsin uh, this fall and we went to, uh, they process the deer, like you don't really you just shoot them and then you bring it to a processor, right? So we went to the processor and they had 200 deer waiting to go into the processor. They were so backed up, that was that, so much of a harvest this year. 
that's exactly what I said, what you said. There's a story behind every one of these deers. It yeah. would be interesting, you know? Yeah. First one, last one, you know, big one, little ones. But, uh, you know, when you try to explain to guys the size of a, a ranch male, you know, compared to a wild male, like, you know, it's just, they don't get it. Like, it's just, it's just mind boggling. I don't see how wild <clears throat> they can ever have a market again. It's just the evolution of technology. Well, it's for sure that's part of it, but I think you have to market it as a niche product, right? As a wild, sustainable product and, yeah. and get away from just getting caught up and saying it's a, a mink, you know? Make make a story about it, you know. Yeah, get yeah, get away from the economics. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Find yeah, a niche right. market and, and get away from trying to compete against them at, at the level because you can't. Basically, with the, this is the shaker part when it's finished. You can see the sawdust out of the, out of the bottom. Mm -hmm. So it'd start off over there and it would be tumbled. And you can see the paddles in it, sort of thing. So it 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 hit it spins and hits, and then it would work its way down here and then spin it out. Eventually, it'll come out this end cleaned. Yeah. Is it noisy? A little bit. Yeah. yeah, not bad, but a little bit. Yeah. You can see pieces of foxtail stuck in the in the rack there oh, that yeah. break off sometimes, you know. <laughs> that's that's kind of a newer type of drum, and then they have more traditional types. A traditional type fur drum has what they call the closed side, which it, when when the pelts go in, they're closed, and they're, they have uh, the uh, medium that you use for cleaning, and the doors closed, and they turn at a certain amount of time. And then once they've done the close side, they take them out and they put them in what they call the shaker side, which is the other side of the drum. And it's a screen side and they tumble in there and all the sawdust comes out and it cleans the pelt really well. The medium they use for drumming the fur has to be changed after almost every load because it becomes so dirty after turning in the tumbler. You know, in this next clip in the video, all the different samples that we have along the wall of the different techniques and colors that they put the fur into. One of the big things that NAFA does all the time is promote fur in the world and to the different markets. And uh, sometimes you can see it in the results at our auction. Last year we had a real heck of a sable sale because we had so many Koreans. This year the whole overall market has been dropping so it's not quite as good. But having that ability to market fur like that at that level increases the amount of buyers that come to our sale. Yeah. Oh. Are you going to Crown? Yeah. Yeah. Crown. Yeah. And Crown? I think a surgeon's coming right yeah. there okay. too for so all the So you guys can take the first uh, minivan, okay? With such a huge buyer attendance, you have to offer a shuttling service back and forth to the hotels. At any one time, we usually have ten different vans ferrying people back and forth to the to the sale net. And another huge advantage that NAFA has over other auction houses is the being right beside the a major international airport. It allows buyers to come in from all over the ro world with direct flights. Okay. Lot 100761. 1.47 100761. The mahogany mink male top lot is on page 5.31. This is just a short example of the live auction. In this case here, they're auctioning off ranch mink, but I just wanted to give you an idea of of the size of the stand and the people that work up in the stand when, when we're having a live auction. And the Sapphire Mink female top lot is on page 18.02, lot number 106620. Page 18.02, lot number 106620. Now, black males, lot 01. That's already been at 43. 43 here, 43. 43 here, 43. How about 42? 42 here, 42. 40 bid. 39 bid. 39, 40. 40 in the room, 40 with that. 41. 41 now. 41 is in the room, 41. Then you got to 41 center, 41 all done. 41. You can surely tell I'm a Martin trapper because I always like to look at the Martin samples. 
I just pulling off the rack here a nice dark colored Martin. And basically what grading does is it matches skins by size, by fur quality, and by color. And that's why we have all the different samples for the buyers to look at. Right now, the strongest thing that's going on for Martin skins is used for trim on other coats. The proper colored lights are important for inspecting fur along with the proper color of the table. You notice it's like a pale blue. The sale is a top-down system, so you start off with your biggest and your best. What I'm looking at at the end of the samples is some damaged skins. And that's what uh, we call third section a lot of times. They're pieces or they're mouse chewed. There's a lot of damage to them. They're very low value skins. Advances 54, all through at 54. Five. Lot 26, start off at 52. 52, I have a bit of 52. And 3, 53, and 4, 54, and 5, 55, and 6, at 56, at 56, and 7, 57 in the rear, and 8, at 58 in the front, 58 in the front, 59? 
Yes, I have 59, I have 59 and 60, I have 60 in the front, and one, I have 61, 61 in the rear, all through it, 61 in the rear. Fire and going on. Yes, he goes on. Thank you. Lot 28, start off at 55. 46. 50. 50. 48. 50. 50. Yeah. 50, on lot 28, I have a bit of 50, all through at 50. <laughs> Thank you. Lot 29. Lot number 24. 60. 58. 59. Oh, this one you got to There we go. Lot 29. Start off at 60. Try me at 58. And 60. Lot 30. Start off at 60. At 58. Lot 33. Lot 33. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. Thanks. Lot 34. Yes. 55. That's the last one. Oh, lot. I'm dealing. Hold on, I'm dealing with some. Darren in front. On which lot? This is lot 630. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. 60. Yes. 60. I have a bit of 60 on lot 630. At 60, all through at 60. Drop. And he drops to 59. Okay. And he goes on. Okay. At 58. Okay. <laughs> okay, moving on. Lot 34. Lot 34 and 70. Lot 35. 90. No, 90. Lot 37. Start off at 90. How about 88? 86. I have a bit of 86. 86. All through 86. And? Why not? He goes on. Over the page. Yeah. Yes. Which one? 35, 88? 90. 90 on that one. 88 for the string? Lot 41. Start off at 80. Try my 78 and 80. Lot 47, 80. Lot 48, 70. Yes, on lot 48, 70. Yes, I have a bit of 70. All through at 70. 369. Lot 49, 60. 55 and 60. Yes, I have a 60. Okay, 55 and 6 and 7, 57 and 8, I have 58 and 9, 59 and 60, I have 6 in the center and 1, 61, all through at 61 and 2, I have 62 in the center, 62 in the center, all through at 62 in the center. Which one? Sold. That one's sold. Okay. Moving on. 650. Thank you. 62 I have in 3. 63 in 4. 4 I have now 65. 65 and 6. 66 I have in advance in 66 and 7. 67 I have in 8. 8 is yours. 68 and 69 in the far back in advance in 69 and 70. 70 I have in advance in 70. 72 now. 72 I have in 4. 74 I have in advance in 6. 76 and 8. 78 I have in 80. 80 I have in not 82. 82 I have in 84. 84 and 6. 86 and 88. 88 and 8 and 90. 90 I have in the front 92. 92 and 94. 94 in the front 96. 96 I have in 98. 98 and 100. 100 I have in 105. 105, or excuse me, 102. 102 I have in 104. And 6. And 8. And 110. 110 I have in 112. 112 and 114. No, 112. 112 I have one, the first call 112. The second call 112. The last call at 112. All done. Thank you.
We started that like two fucking old. This video is a little longer than my normal ones, but it's to give you an idea of the scale and size of the operation that NAFA runs in Toronto for the benefit of trappers. Remember, NAFA is 25% owned by trappers. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in our next video.